Welcome to this demonstration in the Oracle Database 12C New Features series. My name is Maria Billings. I work for Oracle Server Technologies Curriculum. This slide gives you a graphical overview over this demonstration. After checking some prerequisites, you will see that we take a backup on the source database, which is an 11.2 database on Solaris. Then we perform the data transport with FTP and on the destination, which is a 12.1 database on Linux, we restore and recover the files. If needed, Armin can perform an Indian conversion for you, depending on the four transport or two platform clauses. So the first group of tasks which I'm going to demonstrate will occur on the source database. In my example, the BOS database instance is 11.2 on a Solaris operating system. I verify my demo scenario, then I perform backups in read, write or online mode, a full backup and an incremental one. You can perform as many incremental backups as you wish, because every time you do that, they become successively smaller. Finally, I turn the table space into read-only mode, create a final incremental backup so that everything is in sync, export the metadata, and then the demonstration continues on the destination side. In my Solaris demo environment, I execute TCSH and set the Oracle environment variables all to BOS. Logged into SQL Plus as SysDBA, I verify that I have an 11.2 database in read-write mode on the Solaris platform. Please note the exact spelling of this entry. You will need to use it later. In my Solaris environment, I log into SQL Plus as SysDBA and confirm that my test data exists. When I see that the instance is down, i.e. it's an idle instance, I start it. My test table is the EMP table belonging to the HR2 user. And as you see, it has three rows. I want to confirm that, that my database is in archive log mode. And here I just want to show you that the TS2 table space is online. On Solaris, which has an 11G database, I'm taking a backup of the TS2 table space. Now I'm taking an incremental backup and I can take these backups as often as I wish because the incremental only takes the changes. So the more often you perform an incremental backup, the smaller the backup pieces will become. When your backups are sufficiently small and fast, then set the table space into read only mode. Now I perform the final level one backup. I'm using the export data pump utility to export the metadata of for the TS2 table space. The metadata for TS2 are now exported. And I change the table space TS2 back to read write. The slide summarizes the tasks that we just completed on the source database. Now I'm switching to the destination, the ORCL instance version 12.1 on Linux. And I will show you all the tasks shown on the slide. In the Linux environment, I confirm my environment variables, then I navigate to the data pump directory and I FTP from the Solaris all the files that I need. In your Oracle 12.1 environment, connect to Amen and use the restore command with the new clause from platform, as you see here in the slide. So you successfully restored the full backup to the new location. Next, we apply incremental backups. So here, as you see, we use the recover from platform command and it is finished. And we are applying the last of the incremental backups.
which is done already. Logged into SQL plus as sysdba, create the user hr2 with a default password. So now you have created the schema owner of the source data on the target database. And now we import and the job is finished. Finally, confirm in SQL plus that the table space exists. So here you see the result. We transported the TS2 table space from the Solaris environment into the Linux database. And here you see the test data. After the data transport, the table space is in read-only mode. And when you verify that the content is OK, as we did, you can set it to read-write, if that's what you wish. And as you see, the table space TS2 is online again, which means in read-write mode. This slide shows you the steps that we showed you in this demonstration. We had started with our 11.2 database on Solaris and performed the backup and then also the quasi-manual export of the metadata. If you use this transportation of data between databases 12 to another 12, then you would not need to perform this semi-manual export. We transported the data with FTP from Solaris to Linux and then use the restore and recover commands to import and apply the new table space. The table space arrived in read-only mode and after verifying that the data arrived, we changed the table space to read-write. Thanks for watching this demonstration.